Okay, let's talk about the Bulls-Raptors games last night. So, that was a wild game. The Raptors had that game absolutely in the bag. They were up, what, like 20 at one point, maybe even more. And somehow the Bulls stormed back. And actually, it's not even a mystery. I don't know why I said somehow. Zach Levine put on a Kobe-like performance last night. He, I swear, looks like the closest thing I've ever seen to Kobe. I never watched Michael Jordan, so I'm not going to say Michael Jordan. I really think, like, all these Kobe comparisons usually are like, okay, whatever. Zach Levine looks like Kobe in that second half last night. He put up 30 in the second half, had 39 for the game, and just carried that team. Was making jump shot after jump shot. Part of the reason I feel like he reminds me of Kobe is because of how hard, how high he jumps on his jump shot, and it just looks so smooth. And, like, that game was a, was a wild one. The fact that Zach Levine was able to do that was crazy to me. For them to storm back and win that game. Very, very entertaining game. They ended up winning by four. But it's just crazy that the Raptors got eliminated like that. So DeRozan had 23, yeah, but it was all Levine in that game. 39 points, six rebounds, three assists, one steal. And his shooting percentages were were good. From the field, he was 12 for 22, which is good. He was 54.5%. And he was shooting some mid-ranges. Like, top of free throw line, pull-ups that were nice. Uh, he was 2 for 7 from the three-point line, 28%. So, that was obviously not as good. But, really, Zach Levine was just an animal. And I know a lot of you are not going to like the Kobe comparison, but that's just how I felt. I wanted to title it that. That's how I felt like he played. Now, let's get into the rest of the game. Uh, DeMar DeRozan. Not the greatest performance, but you'll take 23 points when your other guy has 39. So I'm not too worried about it. Um, he never has been, like, super successful in the playoffs because he never made it to the NBA Finals. But he, I guess he has had some deep runs in the playoffs when he was with the Raptors. Um, and, like, for the rest of the Bulls, Vucevic had 14 points and 13 rebounds. So that's pretty solid. Caruso... He was guarding Pascal Siakam, which I thought was a little bit weird. Um, I don't really know exactly how I feel about that. But he had some moments where it looked good. Other moments where it was like, okay, he's way too small to be guarding Siakam. Beverly has three points. Like, he's so random. He has 20 bad games in a row. And then on the biggest game, the most important game, he'll show up and hit some clutch shot and have, like, 18 points or something. You're like, where did that come from? Patrick Williams off the bench since getting moved to the bench. Um, it's kind of taking a step back. He had 10, 10 points, though. Kobe White had 9. And really, other than that, nothing else mattered. Drummond only got 4 minutes. Same with Derek Jones Jr. And DeSumo got 5. So they kind of played 7 guys. Like, they played 10, 10 people, technically. But they really only played 7 guys actual minutes. 7 guys played 24 minutes or more. Um, Beverly didn't play... A ton, he played the least out of the starters, only played 25 minutes. Now, let's probably talk about the Raptors now. Where do the Raptors go from here? Do they blow it up? I really don't know, because to me, I, I think that, that might be the right move. But at the same time, I like the Jakob Pertl pickup so much that I feel like if you just get some retooling going on, that maybe if you get it to work, they really should have traded for Kevin Durant. They really should have tr found a way to get maybe OG Ananobi and Gary Trent and some draft picks to try to get Kevin Durant because that would have been a really good lineup of having like Pascal Siakam, Fred Van Vliet, uh, Kevin Durant, Scotty Barnes, and Jakob Pertl. Is that four guys or five? I think that's, that's five. That would have been a really good lineup with Boucher, Precious, and Will Barton off the bench. Would have been solid. I guess they probably would have gotten Markeith Morris too, and they probably would have played him. Yada yada yada. Or not Markeith Morris. Um, TJ Warren. So they they would have probably had some depth there. But I cannot believe they lost to this Bulls team. They really shouldn't have. I think their starting group is a pretty solid group. It is basically all three slash fours. Like a lot of wings on that team. You look at all the wings that they have in their starting lineup. Scotty Barnes is playing shooting guard, and he is absolutely a power forward in my mind. You could say small forward as well, but I think he's a power forward. Siakam is a power forward, um, but maybe could play some small forward, but he's 
basically primarily a power forward in my mind, even though they did play him at center for a while. And Anobi is a small forward. He could play some shooting guard, but he's a small forward. And then Van Vliet can be point guard or shooting guard. Gary Trent is small shooting guard. And those are the six that they play a lot. And those are really the only six they play. They play Precious for nine minutes. They play Chris Boucher for seven, Will Barton for two. But really, they didn't play like anyone. So, I don't know. I guess that they did just kind of run their starters into the ground. All their starters, except for Pirtle, played 40 minutes or more. And Pirtle played 36. So, they all played quite a bit. And I guess that makes sense. They were kind of burnt out at the end. That's what made the Bulls come back. But I don't know how many times you can run back this Raptors team. They've been together, what, four years now since they won the championship without without Kawhi. They've had four years, and it just it hasn't been successful. They had one year, I think it was the bubble, where they still went to like the they went to the second round to a game seven, so they could have easily gone to the conference finals there, but they did not. So ever since that, they kind of fell apart, and now they are missing the playoffs altogether. So with that good of a starting lineup, I don't feel like there's really an excuse to be missing the starting lineup. So you're probably going to have to make some tweaks there. And if a superstar better than anyone you have on your team becomes available, I think you try to make a move. I think Kyrie could be could be a good good guy for you to get on your team because they have Pirtle and he's pretty good defensively. So um, I know they play obviously different. Like you know, Pirtle's a post player and Kyrie's a guard. And Kyrie and Van Vliet next to each other defensively would not be very good at all. But you have... Ananobi that could be a good wing defender. You have Siakam. So I feel like they could make something work, but you just kind of need to shake it up and get somebody new. So maybe send out Gary Trent or something in a sign-in trade and try to get Kyrie. I don't know. Uh, you probably have to be willing to sign him to a pretty big contract. Maybe if Dane becomes available, you make a package there. But I would, I would want to keep Ananobi. I know that's probably who the Blazers want, but I would probably try to send out maybe Gary Trent. Fred Van Vliet, just try to keep Ben and Obi probably, Siakam and Pirtle. I don't know if that's possible, though. Well, we'd have to see about that. Um, but if any other star like that becomes available, I would definitely try to pounce on that opportunity. And, yeah, I, I really like the game. I think it was a pretty interesting game, and I hope that we get another one when the Bulls play the Heat. I think that'll be a pretty interesting battle to see both teams that have absolutely underperformed this year. Now, I guess you could say that the Bulls weren't as good as we were expecting them to be even last year, so maybe they didn't really underperform, underperform. But nonetheless, they both two years ago people would have thought this heat, these Heat's team would have been in a better situation this season. Very interesting stuff going on in Miami though. Kyle Lowry has basically fallen off completely, but still dropped thirty randomly last game. So we'll have to see if that carries over. That's it for the video. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, turn notification bell to all. See you guys all later in the next video. Thank you guys. Peace.